right guys, so we are getting the van prepped this morning to head out to the ghost town that we're gonna go check out today. So come on, let's go. Hello, fellow Vanny, all the way from Minnesota. Vulture City is located on the outskirts of the historic western town of Wickenburg, Arizona, which is about a 50-minute drive from Phoenix, the state's capital. Wickenburg and the mine were discovered by a Prussian immigrant named Henry Wickenburg in 1863. There are many fables as to how Henry discovered the quartz deposit and named it the Vulture, but no real credible records exist. The Vulture Mine is the most productive gold mine in Arizona history, producing around 360,000 ounces of gold and about 260,000 ounces of silver. Some people suggest that it is the real source of the Lost Dutchman's gold and not the Superstition Mountains, as history suggests. The Vulture has been mined off and on since 1863, but by World War II, operations had pretty much died down. A group of investors put the mine back into operation in 2014, and it is in successful operation still to this day. A lot of people start their tour off at the garage at the top of the hill, but we decided to start ours at the blacksmith shop and head frame. According to notes that we received when we got started on the tour, this building and the head frame next to it were moved from the high point of the court's outcropping and entrance point to the west incline. Although we did not experience anything paranormal in this building, shadowy figures of a man seen moving around the building have been reported. Be careful not to disrespect the blacksmith, or, according to the notes we received, he may show he's still around by banging the walls and the roof of the structure. The blacksmith and whoever worked for him had to be very versatile. They forged the drill steels, sharpened bits, and were also very knowledgeable at improvising fittings, pipes, and other items that were needed to mine all of the hard rock at the Vulture. The head frame is outside of the blacksmith shop and it is pretty cool. They have suspended an ore cart at the top which would be lowered into the mine filled with gold rich ore and then winched back to the surface and dumped into uh, wagons that were waiting at the top. The next stop on our tour was the Nichols Rays. A raise like this is a type of mine shaft that starts underground from an existing tunnel. This raise in particular is 170 feet from the top of the raise to the tunnel and was made in an attempt to explore for ore at the 135 foot level. Witnesses say that the area surrounding the raise has had numerous reports of footsteps and voices being heard echoing from deep within the shaft. We personally didn't hear anything here, but the thought of accidentally falling down 170 feet was scary enough for us. The post office was restored entirely of native vulture mine materials. It would have been used as the bank and a small market as well. Shadow figures are sometimes seen as well as having a feeling of being watched here. The cookhouse was the next stop on the tour. It was built in the early 1900s, uh, 
um, which had a main kitchen, a dining hall, and the town saloon as well. The original bar was discovered under piles of rubble during the restoration work. Witnesses have reported sounds of women in conversation, babies crying, and movement of objects and shadow play in this building. This is basically just one big, long building. Um, it looks like the outside area is probably used to host wedding receptions and things like that. Bye. <laughs> Funny thing about this building was Maddie was so excited to get inside of it until we found out that it was the church and the mortician's house. It is currently used for wedding and event space, as you can kind of tell by some of the bridal things in the building. The spirit of a child named Izzy has claimed this house as her playroom and guests apparently bring dolls for her to play with in hopes that she'll play with them. The next stop was the workshop, which is the largest building on the property. Um, it did house the town mill. The building was also used for maintenance and other construction. This building was a little bit creepy and um, definitely felt like we were either being watched or followed in here. It just was a real uneasy feeling, um, but apparently that is what other guests have reported as well. And um, we read about that after leaving the building itself. Maddie actually snapped a photo on this side of the building and thought that she saw what looked like a face up in the upper rafters. We then walked over to the bunkhouse where many miners would share beds and board on a rotating basis. Footsteps and voices are heard here by guests on a routine basis, as well as a little girl drawing a message into a dusty table in the room. Apparently this was caught on video. They always say dogs are very in tune with the paranormal and Hope did not want to leave this door. All right, let's go, come on. Come on. Hope, what's up? Hope, what's the matter? Come on, let's go. This would be the brothel and boarding house. Apparently this is a pretty active building. Apparently apparitions and moving objects caught on camera have been seen in this building as well as singing and the sounds of a man's voice. That door over there on the opposite side was where Hope was just at and she is just as interested in this building from the inside as she was from the out. The kids were most freaked out by this mannequin, and I gotta agree with them. She looks pretty real and pretty spooky. The doctor's office was attached to the brothel and boarding house. Can you imagine having a baby on that table? Yeah, that's what that's for. So this area was probably the creepiest, if I'm being totally honest. This is the hanging tree. 18 men were told to be hung here for stealing, rape, murder, you name it. I personally felt some dizziness standing by the tree which is something that's commonly reported. This building was thought to be Henry Wickenburg's original cabin, although it was used for things like storage and eventually a makeshift jail. The holes in the wall are likely gun ports. 
to allow for protection against attacks and raids. But apparently otherwise, this is a pretty calm building. This building houses the assayer office, the vault, and the guard quarters. It is one of the oldest buildings at the Vulture. Um, it dates back to 1884. This first room is where the assayers did their work. They melted samples in the coal furnace using crucibles. These assayers worked 24 seven. It's your sister. And their work was crucial to the yeah. mining operation success. But I did hear other noises. Bane! <laughs> He's like, I want to see. Let me see. But I did hear other stuff. Okay, now that I heard. So this is essentially the storage room um, where they would store finished gold and silver bullion until they were shipped out by wagon. And that is the vault down there where they kept everything. There are reported feelings of danger, nausea, and just general feelings of not feeling well in this building. Voices have been heard, as well as full body apparitions being seen. So this part was pretty cool, because these are the living quarters for the vault guards. Maddie had watched plenty of YouTube videos before coming out here, and found that this was a pretty active spot. Stairs freak me out on the best of days, but these stairs were exceptionally creepy. The staircase was almost straight up and down, creaky wood, and we didn't know what was at the top. Come to find out, it was just the bedroom for the vault guards. They were put upstairs, so they had a good view of incoming attacks or raids. They also had a pretty good visual access to the vault itself. So these stairs are pretty much straight down, so we're gonna turn the camera off to go down them. Last but not least, the supervisor's office. So I'm just gonna say this, that my phone was fully charged when we got here and we've only been here, what, an hour, hour and a half? My phone is at 17%. My phone battery can literally last me two days without a charge. So they say that spirits drain battery energy, battery life. So it's kind of creepy. And Maddie's is at 29 and hers was fully charged too. After speaking with Jay and Marie Yates, the owners of the property, we decided to head over to the gas station, which has been here since the early 1900s. Apparently this building gives off a lot of high EMF readings. Shadows are seen outside of the station as well as movement of objects and tapping in response to questions. Gas station or rest stop bathrooms creep me out at the best of times, but this one was ultra creepy. Look at that old car in there. 
This pump house building was pretty cool because it did show all aspects of mining and living in the camp. This area was the sole supply of water. There have been sightings of a miner and his child, both in clothes from that time period. Shadows have been seen darting in the area surrounding the building, and then a woman heard calling for her kids, followed by the feeling of being watched, has all been experienced in and around the pump house. So, we were out here for about two and a half hours. Definitely some creepy stuff going on out here. Um, they are offering an overnight stay in March, so I think we're gonna stay. And I'm an idiot because I didn't even know that these people have their own TV show on the Travel Channel, on Discovery. So we just met some famous people today. That's awesome. Like, never had that happen before. Um, but anyway, our batteries are drained on our phone. Uh, definitely felt some dizziness by the hanging tree. And yeah, so I think we'll come back definitely to stay overnight. This is a great place. A lot of history, a lot of spooky stuff. It's back. And now we are headed out of here, guys. They are open from nine until three, seven days a week. Saturdays and Sundays, they have tours. So, um, like people actually give you a physical tour. It's not a self-guided tour like we just took. So yeah, really, really cool experience. Um, I hope that we can come back next month for the overnighter. I think that that would be really cool. Um, get some film overnight, camp in the van, on the grounds. I think that that would be pretty freaking awesome. So, we're gonna make the drive back home. It's about an hour and 40 minutes back to where we live. Uh, so we're gonna put the phone away, let it charge, because like I said, it is completely dead. Um, I'm assuming spirit's draining the battery, but we'll see you guys next time. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Bye. It doesn't take an expert to realize that there was definitely something going on at the Vulture City ghost town. Our phone batteries draining, feeling of being watched, and cold spots in some of the buildings were just a few things that we experienced. It's crazy to think what these mountain ranges and roads would have seen back in the 1800s and early 1900s. If you're not a believer in the paranormal, you just might be after visiting the Vulture City ghost town.